Ha 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 la. My name is Adam, and I will be your instructor in this video lesson. In this programming tutorial, you can learn how to create a basic countdown timer application in JavaScript. This is for creating a short timer that will run your specified script when your timer reaches zero. First, let's take a look at the finished product of what you will be learning how to script in this video lesson. Do you see this? See the countdown you're watching? Okay, so when the countdown gets to zero, it updates the page elements to do really whatever you want. You can update page elements in any way you like. Okay, here I am on my HTML page, and I'm going to start off with opening up a script element. I'm going to make sure I close that script element off. And underneath that, I'm going to create a div element, and I'm going to give it an ID of status, because this is the element that I want to update when the uh, timer has reached zero. Now, underneath our div element that we want to affect, we're going to put in another script element into the HTML page. We can actually just close that one off right here. And within that script element, we're going to call a function to run that we haven't yet created, but we're going to create it in just a few minutes. The function's name is going to be countdown, and we're going to send it two parameters. The first parameter is going to be how many seconds we want to count down from. So if you want to count down from 30 seconds, you put 30. I'm going to count down from 10 seconds. Then I'm going to put a comma, and my next parameter for this function is going to be the element that I want to affect. That's going to be status. So I'm going to put in double quotes the word status right there, the identifier for this div element right here. So what we're doing is after our div element on our page, we're calling a function to run called countdown. And we're feeding it two parameters. The first one being how many seconds we want to count down from. And the second parameter is the element on the page that we want to target to affect. So basically, right when your page loads initially, right when it loads, when it hits this line right here, this function called countdown is going to fire off. Now all we have to do in the JavaScript is put that function countdown. So we'll type in function, space, countdown, open, close parentheses, open your curly brace, and go down a couple of lines and close off your curly brace to make your nice function nest. Now we have to intake two parameters, remember? We're intaking the seconds and the element that we want to affect. Seconds and element. So we can actually make those names make a lot of sense for the variables that are going to be fed in as parameters. We'll call this one sex, put in a comma, and we'll call the next one lm. lm is short for element. That way these variables, these dynamic variables, will make good sense to us within our function code. Now we're going to create a new variable that's going to represent the element that we want to target on the page to alter while the countdown is running and when the countdown gets finished. So while the countdown is running, we're going to target the status element to show the seconds as they're counting down. And we're also going to target this status element to show new HTML content when the countdown is finished, enabling people to go forward or whatever. So we say var element which is the name of our variable, is equal to document.getElementById lm. And you know lm is a dynamic variable here that's coming in as a parameter, and it's equal to status. So we just made that dynamic so you guys can target any element that you like through the function dynamically. And you feed in how many seconds you want your timer to count down from dynamically through the function. So basically with this variable created, Instead of writing document.getElementById lm every time we need to refer to this item, we can just pack it into a little variable and just use element.whatever and access its properties that way. So now, let's access one of its properties. Element.innerHTML property is equal to please wait for sex seconds. So this dynamic sex variable. So if you're paying attention, you would know exactly what sex is going to render when this function runs. It's going to render a 10 because that's the dynamic variable that's fed in as the first parameter right here as sex. So when this function runs, this is going to say within this div ID's inner HTML, it's going to say, please wait for 10 sex. Now what we have to do is put a timer in place to d Increment, not increment, we're going to decrement this 10 seconds number to go from 10 all the way to 0. And when it gets to 0, 
then we know our timer is done. So that's the basic simple logic. Actually, here, let me just run the page and you'll see it. See, it says, please wait for 10 seconds. It's not doing anything, not counting down, nothing yet. Now, since we're going to run this function over and over once per second, we're going to want to decrement the sex variable. So after it renders into the HTML element, please wait for 10 seconds. The next time this function runs, we want it to say, please wait for 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7, 6, and so on and so forth, all the way till it gets to 0. So the easy way you could do that is just decrement the sex variable each time the function runs. That way it changes from a 10 to 9 to 8, to so on and so forth. And this line right here does that. Now you have to have a way to make the function run once every second. And you can easily do that with a timer. And here's your timer. You can just make a variable, name it whatever you like, and call the setTimeout method to run. Now setTimeout takes on two parameters. The first parameter is the function that you want to run every interval that the timer is set for. And you can see our second parameter is the timer interval which is 1,000 milliseconds, which equals one second. So if you wanted a timer to run once every half a second, you can just put this at 500. So that would run every half a second. But since I want this timer to run once a second, I'm going to make it 1,000 milliseconds as my second parameter for the set timeout. And the first parameter, like I said, is the function that you want to run, you want to execute at every interval of the timer. And you can see we're feeding in the necessary two parameters. Remember when we started the countdown function, we gave it two parameters, number 10 and the element that we want to affect. So we have to keep those numbers being fed into the countdown function in order for this decrementation, or whatever you call it, the subtraction of the numbers to keep track of those. So we're going to keep track of the subtraction of the numbers every time the function runs by sending it back through the function and it gets picked up right here again see so when it becomes 9 after it decrements right here that's going to be sent back to the function as a 9 so it won't be 10 anymore it's going to be 9 an element is always going to stay the same now the script's not complete yet but you can take a look at the functionality of what's going on so far you'll just see it goes into negative numbers so watch when we get down to 0 it's going to start just going into negative numbers and it'll keep going on forever. See? Now you don't want that to happen. When it gets down to zero, after it hits one and then it gets down to zero, you want to make some kind of script or functionality happen on your page. And then you want to stop the timer. So that's what we'll do now. Okay, now we'll put in the last little bit of condition logic that's going to allow us to listen for if that sex variable happens to get less than one. If it becomes less than one, we want to stop the timer and then alter some elements on the page or do something uh, within JavaScript to our document. So here's the last little bit of code for that. You can see it's an if condition statement and it says if sex is less than one. So every time this function runs, remember it starts at uh, 10. Sex starts at 10. So after it runs 10 times, this is going to be down to a zero. So when sex gets down to a zero, and then this if condition evaluates it, it's going to see that sex is less than one. So at that point, when it's zero, this if condition is going to pick it up, and it's going to clear timeout, which is the method you can run for the timer mechanism. And you put the name of your timer, the variable name of your timer, within the parameter for the clear timeout. That will stop this line right here stops your timer from running. Then you can just update the inner HTML of the element, which in this case was the div ID of status down here. We're going to update that element to say countdown complete wrapped in an H2 tag. And then we can append some more data using plus equals. We can append some more inner HTML to show up under that H2 element. That'll be just a simple link to go wherever you want. Or you can put a button, a form, Whatever you want to put HTML-wise in there, you can put in. Okay, so let's see what we got now. Let's run it. And when it gets down to 1, after the 1, it's going to be at 0, so it's going to change. 2, 1, boom. And that's how it works. The timer stopped. 
and you show your updated HTML or your updated uh, div elements, buttons, or whatever you're updating on the page after the timer gets done. Or you can navigate them to another page using window.location. Then you can locate them any way you want on the web after your timer gets done. Okay, so we hope you have enjoyed that lesson. And if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in. I read all the comments I get at YouTube. So if you want to give me some feedback and you want to know that I'll get it, I'll read your comment that you put in, especially if it's the first few days after I upload the video. I'll definitely read the comment that you put in. So if you want to see maybe some further code along these lines, or you have any questions that are stopping you from creating your application, let us know. And myself or somebody, some other viewer of this material, we have a lot of knowledgeable viewers, some other viewer of the material might be able to help you out if, if I can't get to it.